Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome <laughs> back. What, one of the best. Great Good. intro. Hello, Thanks. everybody. Hello. Hello. Like an old lady he, coming down. He's for trying breakfast. to listen and talk at the same time. I think Sips was trying to say something on top of me. And, yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. You just went like it was like it was like a, it was like a speech jammer. It was you just jammed me in yeah. the middle of the intro. Jamming your radio. Um, welcome back, everyone. What you been? What you been doing? How have you guys been? Man, I do you know what? I have been playing probably way too much Path of Exile, but I'm I'm really enjoying it. I've been really enjoying playing an action RPG again, and I think Path of Exile's really, really, really good in in the sense that it's vast and it's it's free to play as well. There's lots of stuff very you can do. Very addictive. In it. It's yeah, very I had addictive. To, I had to quit. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm liking it for now, though. I, I I was looking for something to get stuck into, you know. And it's nice to it's nice to be stuck into something. I don't know if you guys have those like, yeah, yeah like yeah. my life is 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 sort of like like you do we do waves, right? Like I'll have these waves where like I'll be really into something, and then I'll sort of come out of that, and then not really have anything that I'm into, and that's like a low point. And then I'll start gradually ramping up towards getting into something again, and then I'll like peak. And usually a peak is me screaming in the middle of the night at my computer because I'm so mad and frustrated at the game, which then leads into like That's another it. dip where I'm I'm not into anything. <laughs> but like yeah. my whole life is like that with games. Like uh, you sort of, yeah, I get into to something and then I'll play it a lot for a month or something. It is it is nice to fee- to find a game that you're you, you're excited for and yeah. will will eat a load of hours for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, I've been playing Hades this week. Which oh is, yeah, um, I've heard that that's pretty it good. It looks yeah. actiony, and I, that yeah, was what put me off. Was like, I know I'm brilliant. bad with that kind of thing. Yeah, it's brilliant. You don't have to. It's not it's not too actiony. It's quite forgiving in a sense that it's quite graphically it's um, it, it is diablo-esque though it isn't it fast yeah. well, well it is it is fast but also in the, in the sense that like because it's so graphically beautiful um you don't necessarily always have to it's not like a bullet hell you know you don't have to you're not expected to dodge everything or react to everything um, yeah you, you can have builds right you can build yourself to be tanky or like or like it's yeah it, it's like a it's a it's an arpg right but it's a roguelike yeah oh it's brilliant you'd, you'd love it sips uh, and you'd probably enjoy it as well yeah, yeah. Let's, not, let's not beat it's, about the bush it's not for me is it let's be honest i'm uh, surprised that you don't like arpg honestly you'd be fine like, with it p flex these things are very forgiving for your old ar- arthritic fingers i don't know if they are i've played a lot of games lately i've played a lot of tarkov lately Oh right. my god! And, you play uh, Tarkov and Dota. These are young men's games, P Flax, and you know you you are a young man at heart. You want to be a young man. <laughs> yeah. You, you know you're not Gabe. You know you don't have to play Artifact, which is the Dota for you old men. You need to overclock you know your mean? Zimmer frame, Flax, if you want to play those games. <laughs> it's just that I, I feel so slow in those, especially well, Tarkov. Like I come around the corner and we both shoot each other, and there's some some fucking sweaty fifteen year old just like, like man. Oh I want like, to say something, down, Flax. Lad. I, I want to say something about this because i was i had you on the other night um you were playing tarkov and i was just playing some poe or whatever and uh i looked over and i watched for like a solid like couple of minutes and when i'm playing tarkov i feel like my reaction times aren't too bad and stuff but if i were to go back and watch my footage i'd probably have the same thing i realized with you and that's that noticeably your reaction times are Oh, really, really slow. It's like, like it's, it's unbelievable, though. But I, I would be the same if I look back on my footage. It would be the exact same. And I think it is that we're older, right? You just you do lose that that you reaction really do. time. Like it's, it's, it's especially insane. in the last few years, it's it's become genuinely noticeable yeah. how how much slower <laughs> my reactions are. Well, well, we know how we respond on this. Sometimes I don't even get a response to things I've said on this podcast, you know. So I, huh? I know firsthand how. Yeah, bad but that's because we tuned out. That's not bad reaction. Yeah, that was a that wasn't a bad react. Well, it was a bad reaction for and you. And actually, I suppose but- kids zone out way more than. The oh old, my god! The old, do the they ever? Folks. Holy crap! Okay, get time to get your shoes on. And they're like cartwheeling around the. the okay, it's, you have to <laughs> it's get amazing. your shoes on. We're going to be late. And then they're like fucking off painting or something it's they're incredible like selective hearing. how the hell yeah. is this happening i've literally been walking behind my daughter my, my youngest especially up the stairs i'm like you're gonna brush your teeth yep i'll do it right now I'm like, okay she gets to the top of the stairs yeah and, and then she's, she's organizing her pokemon she's off doing something else yeah. so i was like whoa 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 you were gonna brush your teeth oh oh yeah goes in the bathroom closes the door comes out i was like did you brush your teeth 
Oh yeah. I was like, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing in there? It's, like you- it's it's um oh it's it's because it's not rude to them, right? Like ignoring people, maybe. I don't know. Like for 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 us as adults, like if you don't listen to someone, it feels rude. It does. Um. Yeah. So like, but I don't know if that's the same for kids. They don't care. They're, I think I think it's because I, I was thinking about this the other day. They have to tune out all day long. Yeah. Like if you imagine the average conversation that I'm having with another adult, they can't follow it when they're little. Oh, so they just get used to your voice being wah, 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 like in the peanuts, right? <laughs> like that's all that you sound like. <laughs> yeah. So they just yeah, tune you out. Yeah, that's how I think of you guys a lot, actually. Yeah, just... and they're in class all day. I mean, geez, in school, I definitely <laughs> tuned out. <laughs> they have that's a, pretty much speaking it. Speaking of reaction times, though, children have a, a like a delayed reaction time as well, right? Because like, <laughs> They do. When you, when you tell them something, it takes like a solid 10, 15 seconds for it to actually sink in. Like their brains are right. just like going faster than... Uh, like reality can can allow for sort of thing so like well, that's more like processing the implications reaction time rather than you know a ball coming at them reaction time though that's like a different thing, yeah, yeah, right? yeah yeah but very little kids <laughs> don't have good reactions no like, they don't they, not they not, really not, in a, not physical reactions no like if you threw a ball at a kid uh they wouldn't even move like it would just hit them right in the face sort of thing like my like, eight-year-old is is very good at dodgeball apparently and I, right. I don't know how, but she's like a dodgeball champion in her mind. <laughs> right. And I'm wondering if it's just because, you know that scene in The Simpsons where Bart throws the frisbee at Santa's little helper and it just goes like, tunk, right into his eyes? Yeah. That's most kids when you throw yeah. stuff at them. Like, yeah. they can't catch. They're, they're hopeless. Uh, it's it's kind of funny to see them playing. Uh, I, I Actually, a couple of years ago, we were in the park and there, it was one of the other kids' birthday. And there was like a, a 10 versus 10 football match that they organized just in this bit of the park. Right. And I was like, this is great. Like me and a couple of the other dads joined in. We were just like standing at the back, passing it to the kids. It was great fun. But they they run around literally. It's like some badly coded piece of AI where it's like, right, we must follow the ball. So they're just like this herd of like, it's like a triangular wedge of kids just chasing the ball around. But if the ball gets kicked anywhere else, they all, there's a, they all sort of pause for a second, then turn and they <laughs> and trundle over there, get the recover the ball. It's just, it was, it's so funny to watch. It's like a really bad school of fish. And that's how they play games. They just sort of run around. They just love yeah. to be running around. Yeah, they do. Yeah, God, man, no they have tactics. so much energy. Yeah. But, when, but that's why when you see a kid who's actually good at football, they stand out a fucking mile because they sort of they have that moment where they put their foot on the ball and put and pick a pass. And you think, God, oh, that kid's like light years ahead. That's like <laughs> this kid is a genius compared to the rest of these kids. It's, yeah. it's really funny to see. Yeah, I guess that it, they, and it comes from the parents. It has to, right? Like that kid has been fucking playing football with. His his dad going to football matches with his dad like his dad is just like football molding him yeah Yeah. big like molding him into like you know the football player he never was or whatever like yeah yeah you see that a lot right my mates um my mates have sons like uh, i think all of my mates actually have have a son apart from one of my mates who's got who's got a daughter like me i've got two obviously and for whatever reason they're just not into football like i've tried to encourage them they're just not into it so okay fair enough but my my other mates, all their sons are into football, like massively, which isn't surprising because all their dads are into football. And they go along to these games and they watch them play and some of them coach the teams and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah, I'd yeah. love to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. But the, the teams that they come up against sometimes, some some of the some of the, the differences in ability is is insane. It's like a yeah. Premier League team playing against a pub team. Uh-huh. So there's this this one private school that they my mate's kids team had to play against that had ties to the Barcelona Youth Academy and like a couple of other youth academies. So these kids, apparently this school produces like young kids who might potentially play professional football one day against my mate's son and a bunch of his, a bunch of his friends. And it was it's just it was like a slaughter. These kids were like on another level. And I thought, geez, how is that fair? That's insane. But you've got to, you know, it's hard enough to organize a game with all those kids and parents and everything. So you do what it takes. But I was like, you're telling me, wait a second, this school has links to the Barcelona and Juventus youth academies, and you have to play against them? These kids are like eight years old. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And then this other bunch of kids, they got like the, the list of team names in. There was my mate's son's team name with all names like, you know, Jack and John and uh, Charlie and stuff like that. And then the team they're up against is like 
Tarquin, F- Farmanzi Fourthworth, and stuff like that. It's like, a, <laughs> no. which school is the posh school here? It was like, it's really funny. <laughs> oh man, what a game! That's eh? great. What a game. I wonder. I wonder how how much of that is like. I don't know. Just super super hyper dad dad coach stuff. It's not like that. It's, it's it's not allowed to be like that. Like the referees. Like I know that there's been a big push to make sure that you don't have shouting dad syndrome on the touchline where they're just okay. screaming at the kids and stuff like that. The referees will come over and say, e- either you stop that or I'm stopping the game and I'll leave. You're out of here. I, I know yeah. there's, been, there's been a big push towards that. And gra- at a grassroots the whistle level, in their face. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's just, you, you just can't have it. It's no. such a stereotype, isn't it? It, it is. is. But like, it's, it's, it's been true. a stereotype for so long. Like dad living, reliving his dreams through his toddler. It's kind awful. Of thing. So I mean, yeah. I, I I saw my dad this week. I don't know. I can't oh, remember. Yeah. I, I don't think my dad really shaped me into anything, particularly when I was a kid. Well, you he know, formed you with his man batter, though. Like he was held, <laughs> a, an important component in that shaping process. He actually, did. So. like ghost. He was behind my mother while she was molding me out of Jesus. clay. Is I that assume. how he did it? He even went into that level of detail. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, I think I turned out okay. I do look a little bit like a malformed lump of clay sometimes, but yeah. we like all. More Lewis. We all <laughs> and so anyway, I saw them last week. They came, they came down for some reason, right? Um, I think they had during the these while. troubling times. They traveled down. Yeah, well, I, I, they, they drove straight down wow. the old motorway from from where they are. It's only about an hour's drive, and right. um, we met up in like a, a park in Clifton, and we had to walk around, and right. we had a pizza. It was nice. Yeah, they talked about how what they're doing and stuff. So, so. There's a couple of things they talked about, which I thought were interesting. One thing is, my dad, we were talking about family, and my dad's dad died. Um, he died in, in the 1960s. And and so I sort of said to him, I said to my dad, you know, what did he die of? Because I'm pretty sure he died of a heart attack. At least that's what I was told right. previously. And my dad said, oh, no, he died of overwork. And I said, he, <laughs> he, died, of, he died of overwork. That's like a medieval, a, a medieval yeah, yeah. death register. <laughs> Died of is, poor humors. It? That's when people used to manually pull plows around fields and stuff. They would they would drop <laughs> dead, right? Died because it's of not, an excessively it, gray sky. Yeah. It's a very died old because fashion. of a comet. Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. Died because he was too far. He was too long since he'd last seen the sea. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he died of sea longing. <laughs> this man. <laughs> Wished only to see the sea one last time, but he could not. <laughs> he lived yeah, in that, <laughs> Sheffield. Exactly that kind of that kind of <laughs> odd, like old fashioned death cause. And so I sort of I wasn't really quizzing him about it, but I sort of said, because uh, I, I just assumed it meant just heart attack, right? Um, and I was like, oh, so what did he? Was he a smoker? You know, because everyone in the sixties was a ch- chimney chimney smoker. And you know, he said, "Oh no, never, never had, a, never smoked a cigarette in his life." And I was like, "Oh, right." So, did he drink a lot? So, oh no, he never drank. Oh, was he quite overweight? Oh, well, no, he was as thin and skinny as you. And I was like, "Was he too skinny?" And it's like, "Oh no, was he like unfit?" No, well, no, he cycled like ten miles a day to yeah, run the grocery people, shop. I was like, "Yeah, what? but you know what? You can you can have like lots of like uh, you know blocked arteries. You get heart disease and stuff like you know even if you're super healthy, like your diet is a big uh, component and all that too, yeah, right? I think this may be what it is because maybe he I was mean, just fucking eating like you know bacon for every meal every single day, and it just caught up to him. You know? I think maybe he was. I th- I think he had. Had, um, I think his my dad was, the thing is my dad doesn't really know because my dad was doing his national service at the time so my dad was doing that doing two years of national service because everyone right. had to do that in the sort of, in that sort of period of time yeah what uh, what is this in the 60s yeah so like right. I think my dad was born in 37 so he's 83 now he was in his last three months of it so he'd done two years and been away from home for two years and he'd been stationed in Germany and stationed in other places so he'd actually been kind of away from home for a long time i think he popped back occasionally but it was all very sudden and very surprising and all he really knew was that his dad wasn't allowed to eat salt that was one of the things that he wasn't allowed and i think that's a blood pressure thing right must be someone someone in um in the comments of the reddit thread or whatever can someone's a someone's a doctor and they'll tell me oh this means this oh now you've done it (laughs) you've opened a real can of worms there but it's it is kind of a mystery and i'm interested in in like just wondering I might I might look into a bit more and ask ask see if I can ask a few more questions because everyone in his family is fine. In fact, his dad's sister. Yeah, well, and the fact that your, your dad's quite elderly now, and isn't he? He hasn't had 
had any any well, so my dad's 83 health. and yeah. and his his auntie actually his so his dad's sister was quite young a bit younger than him but she she's still going she's 97 wow so yeah so there are like certain members of the family the who, worst who ones are like you time. hear like don't get me wrong i think having like um you know like a in family history of like heart attacks and stuff like that is um is is worrying for sure but the worst ones are 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 families who have histories of like um like brain hemorrhages and like aneurysms and stuff like that that's sudden death yeah Mm. that scares the shit out of me you're just (laughs) like i knew i lived across the street when i was growing up i lived across the street from these these two guys and their dad was like he was like this is the 80s right he was just like this old school blue collar worker right he worked like three jobs he was never home and smoked like a chimney and just like when he was home he was just like fucking yelling and angry all the time because he just worked so much and stuff and one day one of his jobs was he worked at a gas station and this is back when you had full service right like they would pump your gas or whatever it was in the yeah. paper and everything he was just putting gas into a car and he just fucking dropped it like right there like just no no warning nothing didn't didn't like didn't tell anyone he was feeling off or anything like that just just killed over and it was he just he'd had a, a, a an aneurysm he just said like that was it which i guess is like a combination i guess they like something to do with blood pressure and stuff like that yeah i, I thought it was i, I, don't know, I thought but, it was when you got a isn't oh let me look i don't want to get this wrong so let's look well look the, thing, the funny thing is about this chap is that my it's an enlargement bad, so. of an artery caused by weakness in the arterial wall right so yeah. the, the wall gets weak and it pops yeah and then um and i guess you then die yeah which is very scary yeah i mean yeah i mean that's that's a stroke isn't it a similar thing it's yeah like a, basically a, yeah but sim- similarly my um my boss when i was working at the bank uh, like when i was programming at the bank uh my my sort of like he was like well like our team leader or whatever he was in charge of like uh, like 16 of us or something um he was just like sitting down one night watching tv and his wife was just like sitting there and looked over like because something like funny happened or whatever looked over at him to to like you know laugh and say like oh wasn't that funny or whatever and he was just like staring blankly and she's like what the hell's going on and he the same thing just had an aneurysm and that was it's it it's awful he wasn't he wasn't fully like he hadn't fully passed away at that point so they kept him on like um on life support basically he was in a coma and they thought that maybe you know uh, he could potentially come out of it or whatever and then in the end it was just like no there's no way and they had to wow. just like pull the plug which is the, yeah, the other crazy. night i Holy thought uh, i thought mrs f had died in her sleep oh my gosh period. i was lying there and i leant over and her arm was was like completely frozen cold Jeez. and then and then i like felt her face and that was cold and i was like oh my god my wife's dead and i leant <laughs> over and i felt her neck and she went <laughs> and went back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> i always know mine isn't dead because when i finally stroll up to bed at like fucking three in the morning or whatever she's always like what time is it like she's yeah. like, it's always like there's always a question like because it's uh, always it's like, always a really shock yeah. told off yeah. yeah it's all thank god she's not dead she's yeah. telling me off yeah it's keep great. the dad at work tomorrow <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like i oh, love that she's well, all right. because our kids are still small every once in a while it'll be like oh she- one of them's been up or like one of them had to take a shit in the middle of the night or so, you know what I mean? Like it's always like some something, right? Yeah. So like there's never any. So, so the last time I saw my gran, like my nan is in um, a mental, not met, well, kind of a dementia h- home now. She, she, we've moved her sort of gradually. She, she originally wanted to be in a home. So we had put her in a home a couple of years ago um, because she actually was like, I, I don't want to have to cook. I don't have to look after this, all this stuff on my own kind of thing. She's, she was actually down for it. Um, but since she's been there, she's sort of gradually declined and become more of um, not remembering who she is really. Yeah, yeah. Um, or at least being sort of stuck in the past. It's a very, very common sort of typical sort of dementia case anyway. I saw her a little while ago uh, during COVID. And obviously we now have to sort of have our distance. And it's sort of, so we're talking across this balcony. <laughs> and I'm there quite smart in my leather jacket. And so she she sort of doesn't know who I am really. And sort of said to me, um Hi Nana Hi Bill yeah. Who are you, you <laughs> young roughneck? So so <laughs> I'm waiting for Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's exactly like that. And so she's sort of saying to me, she's sort of saying things 
so basically because she sort of can't really remember what's happened in the last five minutes, she had this sort of set introduction of, of oh, you know, what, what are you doing here? Has somebody died? Has somebody died? <laughs> She's asking me. Um, and so obviously I said, oh, no, no one's died. And then a follow-up question is, have I inherited anything? Have I inherited anything? She's actually quite excited um, that someone might have died or that she might have inherited something. She feels like she's convinced herself that that's what's happened. Mm. So, so one of these things that I, or at least my mum read, was that you were supposed to not necessarily um, go along with their delusions uh, or dreams but certainly it can't hurt and also i think i i like after a little while after this happened about three or four times my mum sort of just responded and said yes mum so- someone has died someone's died <laughs> and so my dad was like oh that's quite exciting someone's died who who is it Have, is it auntie josephine is it auntie josephine and my mum said yes Yes, Auntie Josephine's died. <laughs> Mum, it's terrible news. And of course, Auntie Josephine died about 50 years ago, right, by the way. Right, right. Um, and Nana knows this full well. But anyway, so she's obviously completely forgot this. And so then she sort of, she was quite excited and quite perked up. So she said, oh, if I, if I inherited anything. And Mum said, yes, yes, you inherited something. And Nana said, oh, have I, have I, have I inherited the cafe? Have I inherited the cafe in France <laughs> that she runs? And mum said, yes, you've inherited the stamina, which is the name of the little alcoholic, sort of the French word for the little cafe. And Nana's like, oh, I've always wanted to run the stamina. Oh, is, is Joe still there? And mum said, yeah, sure, Joe's still there. He died again, like <laughs> oh, 50 no. years ago. Oh, it's sad, and, isn't it? And so it went into this. And so, of course, my mum's sort of, you know, me and my mum and my dad are trying not to laugh. Um, and Nana was having a sort of great time. And, and that led her down this path of talking about her time in France and, and, and what she got up to and how she used, how she, I think she... She she wasn't born in France, um, but her mum was one of these French peasants. She always referred to her as a French peasant, so my great grandma. <laughs> right uh, during World War One, and she was living in the sort of northern French countryside where a lot of the war was going through. And when they all got liberated, she was about sort of I think seventeen or eighteen. And a English truck driver, my great great granddad, took her took a liking to her and he was obviously a good person to know because he was um in the war in the in the in the in the war he was a sort of supply man so he had access to food and all these things so he would give the family things when he sort of drove by to the front lines or you know back and forth so anyway after the war france was in a pretty terrible state mm. and their family was dirt poor so they were all very keen for um Oh, so, um, oh, God, I know it, but I can't remember it now. Anyway, they're very keen for her to go back with him. And he obviously went back um, with her to, to London. And she was sort of this French... They, they had a ter- Apparently, they had a terrible, shouty, but loving relationship. You know, classic old folks yell- yeah. hating each other because they've been with each other forever. Right. And I don't think she ever really fully learned English or, you know, I don't know, ever really fitted in. That It, it all worked out. They had four girls. They had a nice time. It was fine. But but so so this one time my my nan had gone back, you know, back and forth to the French family and seen these places in France. And so she knew they existed and they had this big sort of peasant ch- like French family. Jesus. <laughs> and so she had all these stories, which is which she could remember in crystal clear clarity. It must be so, know? so strange and horrible. But I, I'm I I mean I we I think most of us of, of our kind of age have had relatives who've had some kind of uh, some yeah. kind of you know losing their marbles a bit as they get older. My my grandmother did sadly towards the end, but it was it was just little things like they're out of the conversation because they can't keep up. They don't know they don't. I, I'm sure in part of their mind they're thinking who are these people, but they kind of understand well they're all in this place. But you think how can you remember some old detail about your life, but you can't remember who I am? Like it, it's I so think it's just tragic. like those sort of pathways in your in your brain are just like you know like it's awful more it's awful. formed than other stuff. Like my 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 grandmother who passed away sort of a couple of years ago is the same. She was like I always got on really well with her. I was really close to her growing up and everything. And um, like I moved, and then things just like there was a whole bunch of stuff leading up to like just like before I moved, where she was like clearly. Um, she, you know, having some like episodes and stuff like that. And then it just sort of progressively got worse. And then she was put into like a, like a retirement home. Like she wasn't really, she, at that time she didn't need like full care, like full-time care. You know, she was like, 
she was all right to be left alone sort of thing. Um, and you know, she didn't like need a nurse on hand or anything like right. that to, to help her with like day to day stuff. But her, just her mind was just like, just rapidly just going down the tubes, you know, yeah. like I went to visit her and she thought that I was my dad, Yeah, and, that's a but very she thought common. I was married to my uncle's wife. Like, you know what I mean? And it just yeah. shows like how muddled they, they get, you know well, what I, I mean? I, like, I think it's because uh, I think those people, they still have the knowledge of who they are. They can't remember specific facts necessarily or or, or even like specific history. I think that's the difficulty. They don't because they, they know that you're someone they know, but they don't really have a, a, a certainly a memory of because of we don't realize how much we change from from, you know, in 10 years or 20 years, how different we look. But, you know, 10 years you know, to a 90 year old person is a very short span of time, really. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not like they are uh, devoid of their personality too. like the, often there's still that, that sort of wry, smiling, sort of laughing, joking, same person that you knew, but sometimes it's those, like you said, the little things that are, like indicate that they're some, sometimes like not, they're not who they were. They're yeah. not fully there, but a lot of them still is like, they are still, it's, it's interesting what's missing. I think of it sometimes like a little bit like a dream where things are slightly wrong, but you're still able to react and you're behaving normally in those, in the situations you're presented with. Oh man. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of dreams, man, I had a really weird one the other night. Like it was, it was one of those ones that was just, I mean, it, it feels like it it's like a typical kind of, it wasn't like a bad, bad dream, but like I was scared in my dream sort of thing. And I actually woke myself up because I was making some weird, like, you know, like hooting noise or something like in my, I was like going like, or something like that. But uh, so basically, I, okay, I was, sure. I was streaming. All right. But I was streaming outside. In your I dream. had like, yeah. So I had this like camera outside and I was in this like field that was surrounded by kind of like big trees or whatever. And I was, I, I was streaming. And I remember just like joking around, like with chat and stuff saying like, oh, okay, watch this. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend I'm like angry or something like that. And so I was like stomping around this field, like pretending to be angry uh like doing the like it was like it was like something out of monty python you know i was like doing like this like silly walk or something and like i had my pants hiked up and stuff and i like in my mind i was like oh fuck i'm hilarious like i'm so funny like my stream probably love this right now sort of thing and i'm so i'm stomping around this field then all of a sudden i feel like this this sort of like almost like a hand on my back on my shoulder like as i was walking through the trees and then I kind of realized that like the tree was grabbing me like by the shoulder, but then quite violently by the shoulder, like holding me back. And I started like panicking. I was like, ah, ah, ah. and then I woke up, I woke up in my bed and I was going, ah, ah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> uh, and it was what just like, fuck? what the fuck? Where does this shit come from? Like, I can't remember the last time I was in a field. Like, what the, where the fuck has that come from? You know what I mean? Like, why, why a field surrounded by trees? And why is a tree trying to grab me? Like, it doesn't I, have to, it doesn't have to mean anything. It's just, you're, oh you're, yeah, no, it does. So it the tree is obviously. It doesn't mean anything. The, 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 the tree is obviously Twitch chat grabbing right, you, grabbing trying me. to get your attention. What trying to get right? me, trying to get me to stop doing this stupid Monty Python <laughs> routine? That's like maybe the not walking, too funny. The Monty Python walking routine <laughs> is you running through maps in Path of Exile. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> and the tree, the tree grabbed my shoulder. Is chat trying to say we don't want to watch this stupid game, you asshole? <laughs> Can you play something a little bit more relevant, or like uh, you know, like maybe some uh, phantasm? I have got a game I can send you or whatever. Um, I have got. So Tom found a game that he saw some someone else playing. He found a game. I've, like, I've got a game called Overcrowd. A commute them up. Yeah, I, I, I might might. keep meaning to play that. Uh, the guy uh, it, who made it's very it pretty. Has, has asked me like multiple times. You to should play, play it. it. I, I played it last night for about twenty minutes, and I thought this is exactly Sips's kind of game. Yeah, like you've got to place bins. Oh, you know, and hire people, right? And design layouts of your station and try and make it efficient and stuff. Ooh. But it's very pretty to look at. Right. I like the I like the 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 graphic style a lot. Okay, I, and I thought yeah, and it's English. It's like um. It's like Brixton Road is the name of the station. Everything's in pounds, right? You know, so it's like it's. I just thought, you know, eh, Sips, Sips would play this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'd probably play I, that. Yeah, it's very satisfying. Apparently, well, kind of. I like. Very, I um, love. I love games like that. But you know, when you're just like when you're playing like one thing and you're into it and that's all you want to play. Well, yeah. Of course, mm. you guys know that. 
it's a, it, it's it's shitty when it's a game that doesn't it's hard really to break out of it do right? well yeah. like you know like there's, there's certain games that i can play on twitch where i'll have a lot of viewers and i'll feel like oh this is great you know like i'm glad i'm playing this game that everybody seems to like or that i get more viewers because of and i don't even really care that much about viewers but it's just like i don't know it's the nature of this whole thing isn't it yeah do, sort of look at that kind of stuff mm. so it always feels a bit weird when you play something that isn't as popular but that's what you really want to play you know that it's like a i feel like it's an age-old thing with all this you know like, that's been my, I, my I, thing yeah. with dota for seven years that i've been streaming it or whatever it's been yeah eight years. It's, Some it's, games it's terrible to like, stream um, terrible they feel like a, a job right they feel like a grind where and, and that's partly how it's meant to feel too right like um there's a few which which do feel like they are exhausting, but but very satisfying when you you do sort of complete yeah. tasks or, or get to get to things that like oh you breathe out and you're like look all this shit that I've done you know yeah. it's, it's there's, there's different types of games and they feel differently and you're what you're looking for is you know you want this to find the sweet spot where it feels like something that that is a journey but yeah. also people want to come along and watch it yeah. like I think that. It is. It is tricky to, to. I always struggle with it too. Yeah. Like what, 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 what's? Where's the balance there between my personal happiness? Well, and playing what other people. Yeah, I think it's. I think we it's again like we always talk about. You this. talk this about like the ebbs thing. and the flows and stuff like that. I think that it's all right every once in a while to just play something that isn't necessarily popular, but it's something that you want to play because yeah. it just leads on to something else eventually, doesn't it? Like, I was thinking, you know, if I just thinking back to what we were saying a second ago, if if I was to get uh, senility of some kind or or Parkinson's, well, which which is Alzheimer's, 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 yeah. I watched Memen I watched Memento the other day. Oh and yeah, I thought, that's a, oh, yeah. Couldn't that, you just write a, down all this shit? Yeah, that's <laughs> a, that, I mean everywhere. that's such a like an extreme like version of it, isn't it? Like yeah, like, but it would be nice to it, when you wake up or just to have something all the time that says don't forget. You have Alzheimer's, and everything is going to be, and not everything is going to be clear. Yeah, and a picture of you saying "Don't worry" or something, and you'd be like, "Okay, I've got to bear that in mind." Yeah, um, I think the worst thing about it is that you just uh, that you'd be constantly taken advantage of, right? There'd be people out there. Exactly. I mean, that's why you get all these door-to-door -door assholes, right? Yeah. I mean, here, here's the thing: I'm on this WhatsApp group. I, I talk about it with chat a lot because I get WhatsApp messages. It, it's for my road. Like there's little WhatsApp groups popping up all over the place that are just <laughs> right. like super local. I've got one for uh, my youngest daughter's class, so we all talk about like the the class reps in there can tell us what's what's what via WhatsApp, and they can say don't forget so and so is tomorrow, and that's like dress up day or whatever. So it's very handy. And then there's one for our road, and because of lockdown, we started it because it's like this way. If you need something or you need help or you know you can use this to communicate and it'll sort of grow a little bit of a community on the road. And it's things like, I've got a spare cupboard if anyone needs it. And someone's like, oh, I was just looking for a cupboard. Boom, sort it out via WhatsApp, right? Very simple. Uh, so someone posted something the other day. It's a letter that they'd received through their mailbox telling people, beware of door-to-door -door coronavirus scammers. Now, it was a single piece of A4 with Met Police at the top, the logo. They had spelled coronavirus wrong. It was coronavirus, which I thought was quite sure. funny. And it said, beware Kavona Rye of Scarrers, like five exclamation marks. And then it said, from the Met Police London. And it was like telling you to be careful, don't let people come to your door if they're looking to test you. It's a scam, they're not looking to test you for coronavirus. And I thought, this feels like some piece of propaganda that someone has produced. Because first of all, the Met Police don't hand out badly printed, misspelled flyers through <laughs> one person's yeah. door on the road. Um, I, I didn't see this. And second of all, I think it's just an anti- Corona response thing. Like some people are just like, think, we're, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of f sort of fight back against the whole coronavirus thing anyway in the, in the UK. I'm sure there is in the US. This is another mystery. But I'm like, but why, where, why would you why? believe this? I was like, this itself looks like a scam. And they're like, oh God, yeah, my daughter sent me that screenshot. So she hadn't received it through the letter, through the letterbox. Her daughter had sent it to her and said, oh, have you seen this? So someone's printed that out, taken a picture, disseminated it on social media. And now people are reading that and thinking, oh gosh, anyone coming to my door and saying we're doing like testing for coronavirus so is it wasn't a scam. On your street, actually, no. after all, no, right. that that because okay. that was that was where I but suddenly it was posted said, to the street WhatsApp as if it was posted exactly, to the and they were like, right. oh no no, my daughter got this. 
She was sent it by a friend. I was like, it's like in my day, you used to get uh, chain letters. This is what it is. Uh, You're getting this shitty fucking old person chain email. Exactly. My dad still sends them to me. He exactly. Gets them. They still it's happen. Just chain letters. Like nowadays, it's, it's a generational thing. But they used to be actual letters. That's the thing. Is it used to be like you would get randomly in the post a letter and so you would open it, it up yeah. and it would say it's coming back congratulations you're part of this chain letter thing blah 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 you must send this to 10 you've people you've reached the age where you're now part of a group sharing chain letters it's exactly around. the same oh, it man. has not changed I just thought it was really interesting and also people used to get something called poison pen letters I'm sure I've mentioned this in the past where it's like you would get a letter an anonymous letter from someone just calling you all the names under the sun and saying that you're lousy and no good you would have no idea who it was from <laughs> And I'm thinking that's just social media has now replaced that. Now you well, just yeah. get horrible anonymous tweets or horrible anonymous Instagram messages and stuff like that, or, or comments on your on your posts. The, these people were always out there, but this chain letter shit is the same thing. Someone's made this, they printed it out, and they sent it. They put it on Facebook, and people are blindly sharing it. It's it it's amazing to me. So those old people are going to read that, and especially if you're senile in some way or you have alzheimer's or whatever or you know you're just losing it a bit they're, they're, they're super i mean they, these people get scammed out of tens of thousands of pounds sometimes these oh fucking it's young awful assholes eh? come yeah. into their houses they're fucking scum like they're absolute scum it's a it, it's uh, like an age-old thing though taking advantage of elderly people taking advantage of sick people like it's awful. So, some it's like awful. there are some real assholes out there for but sure but do those people this is what i don't understand is there any moment of reflection that these people have is there even one moment where they're they're alone in the dark at night and they think god what am i doing i'm ripping off old people or is they are they literally i think they're just absolved of all guilt mentally they just do not see it that way no i think that i don't think they ever think about it i think that it's just a means to an end for them like maybe they just like I don't know, like, I, like, I think oftentimes people who, you know, scam people, take advantage of people, uh, have like problems with addiction and stuff as well. They could right? be sociopaths as well. For yeah, like, they, they could, could be, be only sociopaths. Genuinely. Yeah, but I, I like to think that most of these people. Well, I don't like to think, but I, I think that like most of these people don't have moments of reflection. They're either just like in the middle of 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 satisfying this urge or need to to um, be horrible to people or just like hopped up on like <laughs> drugs or alcohol or whatever. You know what I mean? So like, I'm reading this thing about poison pen letters I've just found, right? So it's it's been going on forever. You like, are a harpy. <laughs> like, yeah. it's oh. like it's all like old school stuff. That right? was a harpy. You yeah, are exactly. quite the soul, madam. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's very that's but actually even in 1914 there's this example where someone went beyond that okay and they started sending letters to other people like churches and self-help groups and other and groups of people saying please send me your free book on fat reduction here's my address <laughs> and so they would then send her literature loads of literature about how to lose weight. Do you see what I mean? So it's oh like, God. can you imagine if you started through your door, <laughs> started coming, all this stuff saying, that, well, looks like you're a bit portly around the belly. You could do an exercise. <laughs> oh, man. I would just assume Mrs. F had signed me up for something, in all I, honesty. I took my son to the, um, to the, like, well, it's over here, it's called the German Underground Hospital, but they've renamed it. They've, they've called it the war tunnels now, because I guess it sounds better or whatever. But Jersey was occupied during World War II, and during the occupation, which went on for years, there was a lot of like uh, social trouble, right? Like uh, in 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 that when the Allies invaded France, Jersey was cut off then from like the Nazi supply lines, right? Yeah. So basically, the Germans fortified up Jersey as this fortress island, thinking that we would want it back yeah. and we would really bloody our nose trying to take it back. Yeah. But when but they did, yeah, they waited came, till we the, the war. It. Finished to uh, to, um, yeah. to liberate it. And it so, Jersey wasn't liberated till yeah. Berlin. So fell. these poor people had to live with the occupation. They had you know all these soldiers over here. There was like they ran out of food. There was like there was nothing you know, like making it to the island because the supply lines were cut off and stuff like that. And as a result, people started going crazy. And there's all it's interesting because there's all these old letters that they found of people, and they're kind of like poison pen letters, really, because it's people. It's people just ratting on each other, and and it's it's awful, and like doing it for favor as well, right? They're like, um, 
uh, like they'll send something in anonymously to like the town hall saying like, oh, I thought you should know that uh, Reggie from number 10 uh, Downing Street is, uh, is all of a sudden flush with bacon. And uh, it's a little <laughs> bit weird that nobody else has any bacon in this town. And I did see him speaking to Nazis down the alleyway one time as well. <laughs> like it's just it's just people like being really fucking petty. Um, squealing on each other for like all these stupid little mundane things, hoping that, you know, somebody will be like, oh, you know, good spot. Thanks for letting us know here. Here's some steak or, you know, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> it's, a tin of it's like that yeah. level of, I guess, desperation that just brings out like the worst in people or whatever. But it's it really interesting. Like uh, you always, you think that like, we're kind of sold like, you know, in, in that era, you know, like the resistance and everybody band together for the common good and stuff. And like people are just shitting on each other like all the time. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like they don't give a fuck. It they, was, it's just, like the uh, people talk about the, the coronavirus stuff and the blitz spirit and how we've all got to get together and uh, yeah. and all that. It, it's absolute bollocks. Yeah. The, the Back then, the, the blackouts that they had to prevent the blitz, people were furious about it. The reason they had to have police going around, these wardens going around and telling people to turn their lights out. It's because some people are like, oh, I'm not turning my bloody lights out. I'll, I'll fucking, uh, I've got, I'm, I meant to read the paper. You know, it's like that was this, this actually was the same then. Yeah. So can, mm. we, can we stop glorifying the past just because old people are well, nice it, and you think, oh, it, it's, not the old, it's clever old, that they do lady. that though, because for the, for the couple of people out there that refuse to obey or whatever, it doesn't work on clearly, but it does work as like a glue for like kind of the rest of decent society. Right. Like, cause a lot of people will just sort of be like, oh, better turn off my lights. You know, like that's what they want us to do. Like, I don't want to be the odd one out. Who's yeah, like, but all it takes is one guy not the, to, and that's all, yeah. it, that's all they need. Like it, it's daft. Yeah. I just, I just think it's funny. Like we often romanticize it and say everything was 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 fantastic and uh, the good old days it was absolutely there's fucking always awful. two sides to a coin and i love that i i i'm a, a i'm well known for being a contrarian who will sometimes take just an argument with someone just just to see yeah what happens that's yeah. called being just a to, troll <laughs> yes yeah. i just being an asshole i can't help <laughs> yeah. it like my dad I, I, oddly enough of, my dad is exactly the same if everybody else has one opinion he'll he'll be like well and he'll have an opposing opinion it's, I think I think it's a natural suspicion of whatever the herd thinks is probably wrong. Yes. And honestly, it's a pretty good principle because most people are fucking stupid yeah. and wrong all the time about everything. Yeah. So I actually I, I don't mind the the contrarian opinion because at the very least you're not just going with the flow. You you must be questioning things to have that mindset. So yeah, keep it up, Lewis. Yeah. Just not with me, okay? Because I feel like I am a, I'm I'm a very unique snowflake with really unique hot takes on that aren't part of like the herd mentality or whatever. Right. And but I'm fragile enough where if you question me on what I believe in, or at least what I say no that problem. I believe in, yes, I I my only defense is I would have to start screaming at you because I'm dim. So there's this, there's this whole there's this, there's this whole thread about poison pen letters that I'm reading throughout history. There's this one one case where um, in 1922 and 1923 there was this Englishman called George Maxwell who was indicted for sending scurrilous and obscene letters through the mail. Scurrilous, nice. what a word! So over the course of a decade, the handsome 52 year old Maxwell who had been styled a Gay Lothario, um, <laughs> of course, which, which back then meant serial woman. I right, right, guess, right. Had mailed with tragic consequences nearly a hundred and fifty poison pen letters, sexually defaming nine prominent East Coast socialites. Um, although there were possibly as many f as forty women involved. Jesus. Okay? Um, there had been homes had been broken up. A man had gassed himself. A woman had taken iodine, and another woman had been driven insane. <laughs> man, oh man! <laughs> By his poison pen letters. This is what happens. This is this you know is I mean? one man. Careful. One man and his poison pen letters managed to do all of this all, to wreak yeah. all of this havoc. So. Let that be a lesson, listeners. If you're out there Amen. thinking of doing a poison pen letter yourself, don't do it. Don't do it. Refrain, please. 
Please refrain. Apparently, in the case, one one of these cases, the famed novelist Henry de Very Stackpool, <laughs> who was the author of the critically derided novel The Blue Lagoon, but best selling, 1908, uh, gave rise to this amusing courtroom exchange. <laughs> Judge, you have written The Blue Lagoon? Uh, witness, smiling, yes. Uh, his his defense lawyer, my lord, he is not charged with writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. I love this. I love this. I love this fucking old like English uh, stuff. You know, like the the whole like. I love how like sort of strictly regimented like everything was, and it's so fucking stiff. It's isn't it? so it's, fucking stiff, isn't it? But it's great, man. It's, it's little, so fucking yeah. funny. Holy Especially shit! Especially when they have like a really cutting put down. They just like Lord. slaughter some this bloke. Man with, is with not the- charged with writing the blue lagoon <laughs> like, it's so fucking <laughs> oh yeah. shit man that's some funny shit I, so i was uh the other day I, I decided to watch some some television a little bit right. and i i generally haven't been doing that and what i'll do is i'll i mute the television when the ads are on because they're so irritating and they're always so fucking loud I'm, and i'm getting old and i just can't fucking be bothered with it and i left them on for a bit and is it me or half the ads have a fucking ukulele in or some jingle jangle music? Right. And every, every half the videos I see on YouTube or the adverts I see on YouTube, it's the same tune. You'll know it straight away. It goes like... It sounds like Sims music. Ding, boom, ding, ding, boom, 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 boom. Like that. It's like, it's so fucking, it's mindlessly jolly. And people slap it over any video or any advert, yeah. and they think this will get it going. And sometimes you'll have like a little ukulele. Yeah, it's always and a lady like going, you've got to eat potato with potatoes like that. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, drives yeah. me up the fucking wall. <laughs> it's infuriating. Yeah. There's no creativity anymore. And then I was talking about this with my mates, and we started linking each other. Classic. It's theme always tunes. advertised like some website or something. Ukulele always. music. It's always like. Create your own website for next to nothing using exactly. uh, shitspace.com. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. With ukulele so we were, music, my, yeah. we were sending each other classic theme tunes from 70s and 80s TV shows. Uh, and at the BBC and at ITV, they used to have these guys who were composers. Yeah. And they would come up with these theme tunes and they were fucking like Ken, amazing. Hen, remember Henry Man, Man, Mancini? He's the right. guy who did like Pink Panther and like uh, all, There's those, a ton all of those shows. The iconic music, yeah. iconic. And nowadays it's just staple. And I just think, what happened to the creativity there? How can we supposedly live in this era which is teeming with creatives who are doing all this fucking, you know, oh yeah, we're creatives. There's there's meant to, there's so many more people who consider themselves I'm a sure creative these days. So much creativity going on. But you are completely right about homogenized stuff. Like it's just, I it's, remember watching it. It's um, not creative. Like, Advertising is the opposite this, of no, creative. It's a series of the, coronavirus it's, TV ads, right? Yeah. Um, and they were all the same. They had like sad piano music. We care. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. It was like all these massive same companies. shit. We're listening. We're there for you. And it was like for the family. For for all of us working together, yeah. and it's like the same, so, just the same yeah. mess. It's yeah. like, yeah. Great advertising some... petrol by making me. My sad. Adver- I want my advertising to be like fucking death metal, screaming, <laughs> and then the me- the the message is, "Give me your money, give me your fucking money. I need more money." Like just like like a big <laughs> jab of the hut, sitting in a <laughs> bathtub full of money. Eating money and and money dropping like on his head as well with death metal playing that. in the back. I I, I think Full it's partly people with these companies working in their sandals, you know, who don't who just want to keep their heads down. They like their cushy sandals job where they've got their standing That's desk. That's not it. And they get I'll, I'll tell you. Coffee. I'll tell you what it is because they, they just want to just copy what everyone else has done before right. because their clients won't be mad. But and they it, won't it's not. It's not well, a safety the, thing. You copy it's how they do their research before because most of the clients are fucking old people who. Remember Remember things a certain way and still want those things to be right. So no, that's no, no, why you no, get no, no, a lot no. of like copying. Mostly the clients know what they want and they're like, "I want an advert like this advert. Yeah. Can you do one like this?" And that's what they do. Yeah. I, so, so Mrs. F worked at an advertising company. She wasn't in the advertising department, but she was. She saw the creatives every day, and they're exactly that bunch of sandal wearing fucking hippies 
right? And they're all, they literally just wear whatever they like. They swan around with their fancy haircuts. They call themselves creatives. They fucking watch YouTube all day. And they look for the, the hot meme videos and they just copy that. And that's why, and I, we, I've definitely spoken about this before on this podcast, a hundred fucking percent. Do you remember OK Go? The band OK Go had a series of videos, oh, yeah, yeah. very coordinated. Yeah. They hop about and they dance and the video is like hyper um, choreographed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And about 18 months to two years after that, <laughs> you saw adverts with that same shit in. So some video had this jingly jangly music on, two years later, every fucking advertisement that you see is the same shit because all they've done is seen that on YouTube and it takes two fucking years to put together these shitty ads somehow. So it all looks incredibly dated because the advertising execs have, it goes from the creatives, quote unquote, yeah, yeah, yeah. up to their manager who then has to sit on it for six fucking months for some reason. He hands it over to some other bunch of twats. Then they have to go and do research on it, go back and try again, more research, go back and try again. Then they finally release their precious jewel into the wild, it's an advert for fucking a uh, shoehorn. Oh, will it succeed? It's, who gives a shit? Just put the ad together. There's no good ads anymore. They're all fucking awful. You even watch the fucking, how the fuck are we talking about? Oh, Christmas is coming. The new m &S advert will be out. Fuck off. It's going to be the same as the last one. Tug on your heartstrings, a dog on a trampoline, a penguin who's lost his nuts in an industrial accident. It, it's just the same shit. It is that. It is that same shit every year. I fucking hate it. I hate people make it. It's like news as if the John Lewis advert's going to be broadcast that, you know, yeah, John halfway Lewis, through yeah. EastEnders at tea time tonight. It's like fucking people are Set your clinging on with their fingernails. For an advert. Some sort of fucking, I know, it's stupid. I, this is, but you've got to look at it with a sort of wry smile, though. Sometimes it's kind of um, like warming, you know, to comforting to see that the, the same old shit isn't changing, you know, and that in this world of crazy, different, interesting times, um, some things don't change, you know, we need those anchor points sometimes. So I don't know. Hoffmeister I, I, beer used to have a guy dressed up as a bear, right? Sure. And he had a yellow jacket on and a trilby iconic character for a shit beer. People drank Hofmeister okay. because they liked the bear. <laughs> That's an advert. It's Hofmeister, the, the, that horrible white beer. Yellow Pages. Uh, yes, I, I'm looking for a book by J.R. Hartley. Do you guys remember that advert? <laughs> yeah, of Iconic, course you do. right? Huge advert. Nowadays, it's all the same. It's all just jingle jangle shit. Uh, a gently spoken soft voice, and they really try to make you sad. There's no laughing in ads anymore. It's the same boring shit every time. And every family, like every advertising company has has focus group the shit out of it. It's like, all right, let's have a family that's so diverse. It looks like those old Benetton ads where you thought, give me a break. We know what you're doing. You guys don't actually care about <laughs> diversity. You're just trying to shoehorn in every possible category you can to look hip. They don't care. Stop watching the adverts. Mute the TV. Go do something else. And that. And my next rant is about BritBox. Can we talk about that? Uh, sure. No, keep going. You're on a roll. I'm in. I'm on board. Well, Brit Stop box. watching adverts. BritBox. Don't Right? Do you guys adverts. know what BritBox is? My wife wanted to get it, yeah. Do we, you know what it is? We didn't get it, though. No, I have no fucking idea what right. it is. Right, so it's basically a streaming service that the BBC and ITV have got together to horn in on some of that sweet Netflix money. They think they're going to compete with Netflix. It's cost a lot of money to set this shit up. It's available in all these different countries. US, Canada, UK, Australia. That's where it's out at the moment. Get this. Right. These are the shows, okay? Uh -huh. Initial programs on US launch, okay? On the the U this is show. for the US, though, right? This is the US launch. Right. Casualty, Coronation Street, yeah. EastEnders, I mean, these Emmerdale, are all cultural Holy programs City. that Americans will not understand. Like who is paying to watch Holby fucking City? Yeah. Tell me who. I who don't even get Holby to watch City, Casualty? Really. Yeah. Who's, who's paying for this? It's and gotta then, be like expats, right? It's gotta be I, people I, that miss Holby. I assume so. Like it must be. <sighs> but that that can't be your target market. There's no, they want nobody to have in, the US in the US is, who's already snowed under by like fucking billions of American shows on it, it, It's like asking TV. who's buying flat caps still, right? Some people are buying flat caps. There's a market for flat I caps. I want to know, uh, if you're an American or a Canadian or an Australian, you're, what, you're listening to this stupid fucking podcast right now. You tell me if you subscribe to BritBox to watch Holby City. Let me know. Because I, I want to know how many people out there are doing that. Even like and then there's all these other shows that I actually quite would like to watch again. Like, for example, A Bit of Fry and Laurie. Classic show, right? But I've got to now fucking pay for this shit? I fucking paid for it the first time around with my license. We want to pay for it again. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> should have should have recorded like, it on VHS. I think, I've got it on DVD. I haven't got a DVD player anymore. Who the fuck has a DVD player anymore? I still have one. I don't. My kids my, have my computer discs, doesn't though, even that have they, one that they like to watch still. Like, um, they got a disc. Man, okay, they got they have a disc from like three years ago of this thing called the Battle of Flowers over here, which is basically a parade, right? It's a parade where they they make floats out of flowers. And it's like it's this like age old tradition over here or whatever. That sounds quite sweet. But anyway, there's a DVD that they release every year with like the latest one or whatever. And they just it's just footage of like the floats going down the road with like some music playing and shit like that. Um, and for some reason, my kids love it. Like they fucking love. They watch that shit over and over and over. But there's nowhere. There's no other way they can watch it, right? Like it's just on a DVD. It's just like yeah. that, on a disc. So we still have a DVD player. Like just oh. for shit I suppose like that. I could use the Xbox. I could play things on the Xbox, yeah. couldn't I? But I've got to go downstairs. Fucking ugh. I don't have like I, a. I don't have a disc drive at all on my no, computer. No, me neither. Me like, neither. I just don't have one because like everything is is digital now, right? Like I mean, the, the case that I've got, you can't even fit one on this. No, same. Mine's got just like a <laughs> see through panel on the front with yeah, a button. I chose That's the. It. I chose this case. And I was like, yeah, I'll stick a Blu-ray player on there in case I want to watch a Blu-ray. It was like, oh, no, that's not compatible with this case. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's how little you need this. Well, you shit. don't. Like, I, case, like, you know, no you just slot don't for need discs. Yeah, who, need, who needs discs? Man. But I've got all these old DVDs sat here, loads of them. I've got series after series and movie after movie that I just I don't want to throw them away because I'm like, what if, that, what if I can't get hold of Dr. Katz ever again, for example? Shit, right. Show. Yeah. So hold on. I don't think any of this is ever going anywhere. I, I don't think you're, it's going to get, well, I don't think the BBC is going to put out like a broadcast yeah. in 10 years being like, when, has anyone got a VHS with Dr. Katz on it? We've missed, <laughs> it's gone from the archives. <laughs> we threw away the old films, and so we need you, the audience, to send us all of your VHS of Dr. Katz. Well, don't you remember, no, don't once, you remember that there was that fire at that <laughs> studio? The, I think it was Universal. I could be wrong. I don't want to. I don't want to defame Universal. It was, oh well, I mean they. Yeah, of course. And it burned down. And the originals, the originals, the originals for yeah. thousands of films and records, like all these initial recordings and everything, were lost. Right. So it, oh yeah, it does it's happened happen. a bunch of times in history. Yeah, yeah didn't Ar- Ardman had a big uh, uh, thing like similar, like one of their prop warehouses burnt down. All the the original Wallet and Gromit, like clay, yeah. Clay and like, figurines wasn't it the Saatchi Gallery lost. had a yeah. fire and they lost loads of original artworks, like classic artworks. And... Oh my God, all, all the original clay got fired. I like that. Yeah. So it's now like little statues. That'd be yeah. nice. That'd well, be no, nice. they lost all sorts of shit though. Like it was... No, I know. I think it was really it was tragic. tragic. Yeah. Uh, I, pff, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that these days, like if you... I don't know. It is, it is, it is something which I find myself watching a little bit of. And I suppose that... We, we do rely on these streaming services now. It's, it feels like everything is a subscription, right? It feels like everything is like a, a hot or a dot on your bank account. You know, I feel like I've got so many streaming services just like ticking away in the mm, background. Yeah. I sometimes go through PayPal and just cancel. Man, I still I'm have a subscription to. to Final Fantasy fourteen. I Okay, I've had a su- subscription for like a year and I played that game for like three hours tops and i still have why don't you cancel it because i'm just too fucking lazy like i don't want it, to it's like on a separate website and stuff and it just like every time i get the uh, like an email saying we've renewed your subscription i'm just like my heart sinks i'm like oh <laughs> fuck Not again like i've completely forgotten oh, about this but, and i can't be bothered thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed to the patreon we appreciate your support <laughs> i'm sure you've forgotten about that lol <laughs> Um, and you also fucker. subscribe yeah, you're, to Twitch. You're, you're paying Thank for you. my Final I've, Fantasy I've, I've just realized that we're Thank part you. of the problem. <laughs> we're part of the problem. We oh, actually are. Oh my God, it's the worst. Hey, you know what? You know what film I bought? Okay, I bought three films recently. Try to guess which ones. Bought? Oh, you bought yeah, three I films. Yeah, I bought three films because they weren't available on any streaming services. So I bought them on iTunes. Uh, three films. Um, well, there's got to be something that you want to watch with the kids. So I'm assuming. No, I, I disagree. Oh, I cold, disagree. Cold, cold, I, cold. I, I think these are films that Sips has bought. Let's think of the films that the he Godfather. has watched. Close. Goodfellas. Yes, that's one of them. Oh, I bought okay. Goodfellas last night. Casino. Well, I saw Goodfellas was doing the rounds on, on Reddit. And so I thought you might because you played Mafia. I thought that was a good clue. I was the, I was got you. That was good. I'm, well, I've been I'm watching. Up, I've been rewatching Sopranos blacks. as well. So, I'm, so wait, I'm, wait, wait. So are are these films? Are these films all mafia themed? No, only okay. Goodfellas, uh, which you which you now have. The movie Die Hard. No. Predator. No. Um, let me think. Hmm. What else have you been into? 
Think of sipsy kind of films. Weekend at Bernie's. I'll give you a clue of uh, some other movies that I have in in my library, okay? That I purchased on iTunes. I have purchased Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. So Gentleman Bronco. Gentleman Bronco. Right. But I've also bought Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood. <laughs> okay. And Straight Out of Compton as well. The, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. that's an interesting one. Uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Look, I'll Jolly uh, look. I'll just tell you what they are. Yeah, okay, just tell us. This them. is going to take. Okay. <laughs> I bought the Royal Tenenbaums and I bought uh, the Life Aquatic. Oh man, Steve two, two oh. classics. Yeah, they're great. It's Steve yeah. Zizou. But you can't yeah, you can't get them on any of the streaming movies. services. So it's just like, but and I watched Donnie Brasco the other night, which was on Netflix, which I I liked, but. Donnie, man, Donnie, uh, Donnie, take the a look at this. Whole you want to see something? Look at forget this. about it. Forget fu- about it. Forget, yeah, it. It's a forget about it. Give it to your girlfriend. It's a fugazi. It's like, they used it way too much. It's overused. You don't say forget about it like forget in every it. conversation. He does. I've I've been watching uh, Haunting of Bly Manor right. on Netflix. I heard um, that that was pretty good. I can't watch scary movies. And I Sorry. really, it's a TV show. And I really enjoyed it because, um, I mean, the original Haunting of Hill House is, is a classic book that is very much recommended. It's, it's what's called a terror. Of, well, I, I learned the difference between terror and horror, right? So horror is the sort of emotion and feeling you get after you've been shocked, okay? Whereas terror is the kind of build up, like like you being scared of something that you haven't seen yet. Okay. So that's in in a sense, like the original haunting of Hill House doesn't really have many not not jump scare moments, but more more climactic moments, right? Uh, at least the original novel doesn't. Yeah. And I think the the TV show only really has one sort of jump scare. It's a lot of very creepy stuff, a lot of very build up, a lot of things in the background that you sort of don't notice immediately, or, or certainly people in the show don't notice, but you sometimes spot and you're like, oh God, I think I saw something in the background. And you usually did. Right. Um, and so it's very deeply unsettling. And it had me sort of, after I watched it originally, looking around like, you know, I turn the lights off in my flat or whatever. I'd look around the room and I'd like, just check the corners or whatever. Oh, just I like, hate that oh, feeling. God. Yeah, it was it was really proper proper spooked me up a little. I bit got that after watching the, uh, the 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 sort of um, the most recent Twin Peaks series. You know, the one that was uh, that they the 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 current one, like the the one that came yeah, out yeah. twenty seventeen. Because I, I think Twin Peaks is about the limit for me <clears throat> in terms of like spooky weird stuff. You know, like. It has its moments. It's not the right. whole thing for isn't sure. spooky and it was weird, the, but it does yeah, have its sure. moments, sort of thing. I, so I, I watched about, Hereditary last year. I think it was last year. Maybe is that the one with the, very cl- the girl film. that makes the clicking noise? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's genuinely very unsettling. I, I know yeah. some people were like, "Oh, it was good. It was when it was a psychological horror, and then it just got sort of schlocky." Nah. But it didn't because it was, that was only the last like twenty minutes. Like yeah. the build-up was really unsettling because it's just like a family arguing and falling apart, and there's something creepy happening, and it feels bad. What about, but the I bit saw... that stayed with me was when the the young kid. And this is spoilers, obviously you haven't seen it. At the end, he's running away from his mother, and he's standing there, and he hears something behind him, and he turns, and there is Payman, the devil's sort of sidekick, just in a just looking at him from around a corner, grinning and sort of lit, kind of spookily, and he's just smiling, and he's like, "God, that's fucking terrifying." Like, I, I know that um, I was I did some interviews for Valve over the last couple of weeks where we spoke to game developers, and there's a guy called Airdorf who made a game. Uh, called Faith. It's a three-part thing that he made. Um, And it's like in a retro style. But we had a lot in common when it came to um, things that we found scary. Because one thing that really scares me as an atheist is not the supernatural, but the idea that all these devils and everything and demons and Satan and God, by extension, are all real. Like, I find that very scary. Like, the idea that it's real and I'm wrong and I am actually am going to go to hell and there really is a, a, a Satan and all the rest of it. That's a very terrifying idea because it seems so far-fetched and outrageous, but it also affects me. You know, I, that means I do have a soul and I am a sinner and I am going to burn forever. Like, that's scary. It, I find it scary because when you start going into a, a world of supernatural and where you've seen something supernatural happen, that means anything is possible. Yeah. And then I, I, I and it's very, very scary to, to have that sudden unknown. You know, I feel like we live in a very rational world, but as soon as something weird happens, supernatural, it's like, 
can now people be possessed? Can people like what are the rules? Yeah. Like it's not. What's my it's unclear. What's That's my method very, of combating this? I, there's no I method. Think sometimes it could be very frustrating to watch and listen to and read those things. Like like for example, American Gods. I never really enjoyed the book, and I never particularly enjoyed the TV show. Um, I I didn't mind it. I thought it was an ex- exciting fairy story. Um, and it was fun, but I I like I didn't like it, and I didn't like it because the rules were so poorly established that i'd never felt any sense of tension i was like well this is fucking bullshit this guy could probably just pull a fucking gun out of his ass at any fucking moment and just shoot a guy in the head who won't die because he's a god or some shit like i didn't know what the fucking rules were they never established right. even p- half properly and so i was just incredibly frustrated throughout it but in the same way when that translates to a horror film and you don't know what the rules are that's really unnerving because you're like what is, is this guy able to kill people or not? Like uh, it's it's really scary. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I've been watching the Blind Manor and a little bit like that. You know, I th- I'm I assuming think it, this, this rules... guy is going to have this thing happen to him, and another thing happens, and it's very unexpected. It's very scary. Yeah, because um, like we like you said, the, the we we think of the world as rational, and especially if you're not a superstitious person, if you don't believe in ghosts and all that, the idea that actually they are there and you have no method of defeating them is is a very scary one. Like it's genuinely unsettling. Uh, so I like that kind of horror that creeps into like the occult and and demons and yeah. stuff like that because it's it's this idea that and also that there are always people who are like on their side. What's it called? You know what was, I mean? Like um, agents for these guys, like cults and stuff. It's scary. I was watching um, just like briefly. I had uh, it on, but I didn't realize what it was. Um, I had to ask Chat what what the movie was, but it, I think it was it too, possibly. Oh yeah. But it was like. Uh, there's like some kid and he was in like a in like a you know like a haunted mirror uh thing like at a fair or whatever oh yeah and then like this clown appears and they like he's like licks the 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 window or the mirror or something and he just looks like uh like uh, man i i haven't seen it in years but like the new one looks actually kind of scary like it, the, fir- the first one was okay i didn't watch the second one they're really really good the new it movies the, i mean I they, they had to them. change the books a lot because the books i mean it's fucking stephen king so it's just bonkers and not very good in all honesty yeah like, there's some really weird scenes in there like at, towards the end of like when they're kids they all have sex with the girl in their group or something like that yeah like, yeah there's like i remember my friend read the book when we were like in high school or whatever and he said it was like pretty pretty weird pretty graphic there was like lots of like <laughs> weird like sex yeah, shit in it really stuff. weird yeah. it is like uh, for, me, for me for me his King best books really uh, his, his most fun books they're like a like a really good sort of actiony movie the the original running man book is is excellent but he right. wrote that as Richard Bachman for some reason, a lot of Stephen King. I think just to see, I've been very successful with Stephen King. If I wrote a good book and released it under a different name, I wonder what would happen sort of thing. So it seems interesting. But anyway, the, the original Running Man book is very, very good, and they made a terrible movie of it. But if they made an actual movie, the actual book, it would be genuinely really something. Um, and he did one called The Long Walk, which, as I understand it, they want to make into a movie, even though, to, to be quite honest with you, it's interesting as a book, but as a film, the idea is it's a game show and these kids turn up, they're all young and they just have to walk as, as for as long as they possibly can. There's no sleep, there's no rest, they just have to walk right. and the last man standing wins like a billion dollars or something like that. <laughs> and it's just the weirdest, like how is that a movie? You're just going to have people walking and occasionally one of them gets tired. If you stop for too long, they shoot you, like you, you're dead. So it's not like you can just drop out. You, it, it, like the, the the last man standing is literally the last man alive. Everyone else has died, so they're being not sort gonna of, lie. What? I like these hour and a half like movies like that. I I, I, I with a weird. I would, I would watch it. The format the- has to be uh, like. Th- the thing is, nowadays, I find sometimes they try to crowbar too much movie into the movie, right? Like, Agreed. Like, and and we're in in the in the age of uh, docu series, so like you you've got like you can't you can't get away with it anymore. You can't fit like a really complex story into two hours anymore. It, it just doesn't work. And even then, they used to write movies better a long time ago, so they could uh almost fit uh you know a a, a a complicated story into two hours or whatever but like it, it, just make it into a series if it's if it, if it needs more detailing than oh, that please but, don't i'm sick of this too many fucking series now no nah, but oh, I, it if, drives they, me if mad. they're done right they're they're great though like you know what i mean like it's 
I, so I, I, I find I, we like... were talking about the boys before we started. I thought that was good. What was it? Eight episodes? Yeah. Perfect. That's fine. Perfect. Yeah. No fucking filler, no bollocks, none of these 24 parters. Four seasons. Oh, I shit. think season two of the boys was absolutely crammed full of filler. I thought it was garbage. What are you talking about? I thought it was incredibly poorly written. No, no, the second no, series no. Of the boys. no, no, no. I thought it was some of the worst TV I've watched for a long time. The boys itself, season one was great. Season two, I enjoyed it. What was wrong with season it, two? But I thought it was so fluffy and woolly. Well, which, like which people bits? just constantly appearing behind each other. Like suddenly, suddenly they start warping across the country in 10 seconds. And then they're all next to each other and none of them know they're there. There's no, it's incredibly convoluted. I, did, I didn't see that at I, all. I thought the boys was, va- second season was much weaker than the first I season. disagree. I thought and it I was think, really good. I think good. you're going to, I think you, people are going to look back on it. Uh, if it carries on down this Jamwood's trajectory, people are going to be like, oh yeah, that's right. Actually, now I think about it. It's like Game of Thrones, you know. Oh, now I think about it. season five wasn't very good either, was it? Do you no, know no, what but I mean? I'm trying to understand what, what was your problem with superheroes being able to do superhero shit in a superhero show? Like that's what I don't understand. Well, how come Queen Maeve can just teleport behind literally any character at any point on the show? Uh, that's not one of her established superpowers. Oh, you mean where she she just sort of turns? She's up? constantly. Uh, everyone is though. Everyone's constantly conveniently there to the point that it removes all tension. You know, any character can deus ex machina out of the wall at any time to save any other character. I don't know. I just didn't find it gripping at all. I, I found it a bit like a bit of a missed opportunity. And I think the writers were, were fucking wearing their sandals, sipping their lattes, <laughs> patting themselves on the fucking back as they wrote something that they knew was going to be I a thought it was hit really regardless fun. of how I thought it was really fun. It. I mean, especially like I, I've read some of the comics and you couldn't make a TV show out of the, the comics. Like they're just too... There's sex on like every fucking page. Like it's just it's it's too much. Um, I, I thought the TV show did a decent job. I thought the characters they introduced this season were really interesting, and I, I liked. I really liked it, and I loved the. I, I the didn't whole, hate it. The I whole thought it was a cult right, thing but... that came up, and you know the the head popping stuff, and and I, I really didn't see the ending coming. I had no idea how I it think was com- going. Compare it to Watchmen, which I thought was brilliant. Ugh, um, oh, I haven't brilliant seen that TV. yet. Is it? Is that good? The TV show yeah. was brilliant. Um, anyway, that's that's our, our opinion. Uh, go ahead and, and make your own make your own choice. I haven't watched any of these. Uh, surprisingly, normally I've watched stuff, but I, I don't haven't know, dude. watched. You've just gone out and reordered a bunch of old movies off iTunes, I suspect, and you're rewatching The Sopranos. Like, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that you should. You know what? It's I been really great why, though. But... I haven't watched Sopranos since like maybe 2005 or something. And I've forgotten so much of it. It's like oh, yeah. watching it for the first time again. It's, it's There's been so great. much to it. Have you Fuck noticed? Me, it, I was it, laughing so hard. That, I don't know if you remember the episode where um, uh, Tony <laughs> is uh, is accused of going off with Adriana. You know, um, Christopher's uh, fiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. um, and Christopher goes off on one like crazy. He'd just been to rehab, but yeah. he's like, Tony, fucking, how could you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's my furious, girlfriend. Right? I love that. Christopher, you fucking think I was fucking Adriana behind your back? You out of your fucking mind? <laughs> the scene where he comes into the uh, <laughs> at the back of the deli, you know, where they all play cards and stuff, and they're all laughing about uh, about something, and he's like, he's on like fucking high alert. He thinks that everybody's laughing at him because he's found out about this uh, this thing. This is like, bef- like you know, is there like a slow mo of Paulie the- going he 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 laughing? Yeah, that's right at the same one. That, but with, it's doing that's that a- point thing with the the his, yeah, like that's he's doing a, a devil different voice. context though. That's off the back of Carmela saying you only have friends because they're scared of you and they want to kiss your ass, sort of thing. Right? Yeah. And Tony's like, well, it's not a fucking popularity contest. I'm running a business here, you know. But like, <laughs> he starts to like notice that these people are just like trying to kiss his ass like constantly, sort yeah. of thing. Like he makes these dumb jokes, and that's where the slow motion poly thing comes in yeah but yeah i was laughing because christopher comes in and uh he's he's fucking furious right all these guys are laughing and he thinks that they're laughing at him it's like what's so fucking funny like what the fuck are you laughing at and that and that veto you know the the big guy yeah yeah he's like saying like ah they're laughing at my dick or like my dick size or something like that and uh, and he's like trying to like get them out of it. He's like, you know, come on, Christopher. You know why are you breaking my balls? We're just trying to have a little laugh. We're just trying to play some cards. And he's like, <laughs> he ch- he has like some French fries. He fucking chucks the whole thing at him. He's like, shut the fuck up, you 
parade float. <laughs> I, was, I fucking died. It was amazing because he's like this huge guy, right? Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. parade float. Like, what an insult. That's a good oh, one. Fuck me. It's man. a great it was, show. It, like uh, you said, though, so you, you can rewatch it and be like, oh, I completely forgot about this stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's so, so many little storylines that you forget about. Have you noticed, it's... though, if you watch if you watch a lot of Sopranos in a row, I have found that there is a slight formula to the episodes where, you, where they obviously thought, we've got to give someone a, two things this week. Tony has to fuck someone who's much hotter than Tony, <laughs> and Tony... Tony or one of his mates has to kill somebody. Like that's pretty much every episode. I don't know. It's just it's yeah. so well written. It's it is so great. fucking good. Like but there is just... there is that. It, I do find it's funny when you notice it. They're like, no one's been beaten up or killed this week. So it's like a waiter accidentally spills their soup. Oh, you got fucking soup all over my Armani suit here. I'll give you a fucking soup. Bang! And they punch oh, him in the face. Fuck me. I love Beat the. Him up. Uh, it's like that. I love the part when he's like he's trying to get with the with the therapist. You know, like you know, he goes through those couple of episodes where he's like. You know, he's trying to really appeal to her and say that he loves yeah, yeah. her and that he just needs her and stuff. And then they have that sort of like showdown where she's like, he's like, you know, why why won't you go out with me? Why won't you give me a chance? And she sort of starts saying like, well, I don't agree with your morals. I don't agree with how you live your life or whatever. Right. And then just the sudden outburst. Fuck you! <laughs> he fucking leaves, <laughs> and then you hear like muffled behind the door as he leaves. Cunt! Like it's so fucking amazing. It's so good. It is. It's a great just show. It, it, like the the characters are super well written. Like ah oh, fuck me! If you've never seen Sopranos, you have to see it. It's it's, it's, it's one great. of the best. It, it's it, so it good. All right. Well, I think that's fuck a good me. place to end with. Uh, well, since we talk about the boys, I suppose it's only appropriate that Sips would yell. Uh, the c word. Um, just Wait, right do the they use there. that a lot in the boys as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Man, holy Christ! Do they use it a lot in the Sopranos, eh? Like everybody is a <laughs> cunt or twat, <laughs> fucking twat. <laughs> everybody uh, is a fucking twat, fucking uh, cunt. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what? Right, we're going. All right. Thanks. Have a good one, everyone. Okay. Bye. Love you. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>